Hi everybody, it's Beth Kingston. Happy Saturday night and welcome to another episode of Let's Craft with the Kingston Home. That's me. Um, if this is your first time joining us, I'm excited to have you. Welcome. If you joined us last week for our first episode, I'm tickled that you have come back to spend your Saturday night with me. Uh, cheers. Happy Saturday to everybody. Tonight I'm drinking a rosé. Let me know what you're drinking. Um, if you're joining us with a friend, I want to know where you're tuning in from. I want to know all the things. I want to talk about what's been going on in our lives. But first I want to talk about the project we're doing tonight. So this is the Crayola CIY storage box keepsake craft kit. If you bought the collection for this series, this is included. Um, but I want to talk about, it's essentially a dry version of uh, paper mache. And I'm really excited because I know a bunch of us, you know, you go to a craft store and you see things made of this kind of material and you're not quite sure what to do with it. So today I'm going to show you and we're going to make the cutest storage box in the history of ever. So I want to make sure um, everybody's got what they need. So you're going to get this storage box with these cute little drawers in it. You're, uh, you also have a 25 pack of some really cool rainbow cardstock. Rainbow is everything these days. And so I'm super excited about this. You get a bunch of templates, which if you're a crafter, we're going to talk about these in a minute. If you're not a crafter, ignore everything that I'll tell you when I talk about those. And then you're getting um, a set of cool sticker sheets. We'll talk about those. You're getting a full set of Crayola fine line markers. And then you're getting the coolest glue stick in the history of ever. The only thing you need that doesn't come is doesn't come with is a pair of scissors and a pen or a pencil. And of course your beverage of choice. Okay, are you guys ready to do this thing? I'm very excited. So, I'm going to get us started, and then I want to know what's been going on with you guys. I'm very excited. So you're getting these templates, and they just, the pieces just pop out. Um, and I've gone ahead and done, oh, this is my one from the other kit. So you're going to go ahead and just pop these out. I've already done mine. So here's why I want to talk to my crafters for a second. Because this is a square box, a rectangular box, my first instinct was to get out a trimmer. Don't do that. <laughs> These templates are so much easier. You guys are going to be so excited. I was like, I'm just going to get on my trimmer and measure. No, girl. This is what we're going to work with, and it's going to make life so much easier. So you're going to punch out all your templates. Then you need to start taking a look at your sticker, these three sticker sheets and your paper um, that comes with. So before we get started, this is one of those I want to sort of talk you through some things. Um, when you're working on this project, you are going to be left seeing some of this craft colored chipboard. If you have paint at home and really want to go crazy with it, you could take all of these out and paint your chipboard. Um, before you cover paper, you could paint your chipboard and leave it whatever color you want. I decorated the whole shebang because I love how colorful it is, but wanted to give that to you guys as an option because I want you to do what's going to make you happy and what's going to make you love this project. So here's how I did mine. Um, I was looking through these and was obsessed with this one down here. <laughs> so this sticker is how I decided to start building the colors of my um, box. So there's some darker colors in here. Um, there's some really cool geometric. There's some gold in here. But I started with the stickers and then went back and did the paper. So I'm gonna, first thing I'm gonna do, I've got my box. You just peel off your sticker. The great thing about these is they're very forgiving. <laughs> so let me move this over. Um, and you are gonna see a tiny smidge of white around the outside. So that's nice because you're not trying to like line everything up exactly right. So I just set this down. Smooth, so good. Um, but it, like, if you needed to peel it up and pick it, put it back on, you totally could. So I also use I used a couple of these. The sheets sort of coordinate, so um, I use some from the same sheet. So I want to put the stickers on first, and then I'm going to talk to you about coordinating your paper. So while I'm doing this, I want to know what's been going on with you guys. Um, if you live on the East Coast, did you survive the hurricane? Okay. Um, we had some uh, tree fell in our neighbor's driveway, which narrowly missed our sponsor daughter's car, which I hope she's not watching because we didn't tell her that. Um, but otherwise, we're safe. We've had some flooding 
but otherwise we're very grateful. So if you're on the East Coast, I want to know, or in Florida, I want to know how you how you survived the hurricane. Um, so I started with these stickers and none of the others really appealed to me for sort of what I had going on. So that's when we're gonna take our templates. I'm gonna set these stickers aside. That's when we're gonna take our templates and start cutting shapes. So when you're flipping through your cardstock, again, remember how I was talking about painting this. This is not just for these bright rainbow colors. I wanna show you, so I'm gonna pull out, I pulled out of course all the fabulous rainbow papers and I already cut a few, so I'm gonna set those aside. But I wanna talk about like, if you have more of a natural theme going on, this would be really pretty with a painted white box. Um, you can also use cardstock if you wanna do that because you've got the templates. There was one in here that I loved that would be amazing for, I thought this would be beautiful for or if you wanted to do a Christmas box, again, you could paint it white, you could paint it red, um, use this for some of the drawers. I mean, the pos because in addition to being able to cut them, um, cut this paper out with the templates, if you're somebody that's got cardstock at home or different pattern paper, this is just a really cool combination. So I want you to think about what you want your box to look like before you get started. So once you've picked out your papers, which I have, then you're going to start Excuse me, let me take a sip of my wine. Then you're gonna start trying to decide where you want these colors to go. Here's another, there are like 70,000 great things about these projects, as I said in the first video. Um, the fact that you get to try all these new techniques. Because you get so much of everything, you get so many stickers, you get so much paper, you can try a pattern stick it on, and if you don't like it, you can toss it. I will show you two examples right here. <laughs> don't, don't think there are no craft fails on these uh, episodes because I did not like what was happening there. So I just tore them off and started again. Um, so I've pre-cut a couple of these just because I feel strongly that you guys don't want to watch me um, cut paper. So I've already done a few, but I wanna talk to you about and this one's gonna go up here. I wanna to talk to you about using the templates and I wanna to talk to you about cutting them out. So the piece of paper that I'm gonna use to do the sides and one of the um, boxes is this one. So here's a couple things when you're working with pattern is you want to make sure, take off the ones that are glued down. Because this pattern goes, in my case, vertically, you need to decide how you want it to go on your project. So I'm gonna have this going down the sides. So I needed to decide if I wanted it to go this way or this way. I decided I wanted this way because it gives me a little bit more of a pattern. It's not just long straight lines going up and down. So now that I've decided that, I know that I need to cut my rectangle that way. So I'm gonna flip this over. Oh Lord, see I already put it on the back too. Flip this over, get out my stencils, and again, for my templates, come on little pieces. And again, this is where the um, quote unquote professional, this is the right one for that, the professional crafter in me would have gotten out my trimmer. Guys, this makes it so much easier. I wish we could have templates like this for everything. So you just double check that the pattern is going the way you want, and obviously you need two of these. And it actually comes with the two. I just didn't cut it out. You're gonna take your pen. And this is nice, good quality paper. So um, some papers, if I used a pen, you'd be able to see the line right through it, but you can't. So I'm just gonna draw here, draw here. Do a next one. Okay, what else can we talk about? Um, how's everybody? As Can you believe summer's starting to wind down. Is anyone getting ready for fall? <laughs> I'm, I have to admit I'm ready to do pumpkins and such because I feel like that's going to sort of bring me out of my rut. Um, okay, so I'm going to cut these two and then we're going to cut the drawer. And again, um, you just need a pair of scissors. As a you know, traditional crafter, I would have gotten out my trimmer, but that's the cool thing about these kits is 
you don't need all that extra stuff, right? Everybody's got a pair of scissors. Everybody's got a pen. So I didn't need to go round up 17 other supplies. Sure, I have a trimmer, but why would I get it out when this cuts, when it draws the template perfectly straight? And then I can go ahead and cut these shapes really quickly. Speaking of scissors, have we had the fabric scissor conversation? Do we need to have that? Do you guys have special scissors like construction paper scissors and quote unquote good scissors and fabric scissors and we have kitchen scissors. We have all, all the kinds of scissors. Okay, so I'm gonna set those aside, get ready to glue those on. And then here's a tip about scissors. So I need to do one more box cover. Okay, that's the right one. And again, I need to decide. So this one I want to be opposite of the paper on the sides just for a little more of a visual flair. Flip this over. Um, I don't know who needs to hear this, but things are so much easier when you just line it up on the corner because then you're only drawing two sides instead of four. And we're just gonna bloop this in here. And then here's a great trick. I, gosh, I think I was probably, I'm ashamed to say this, I was probably in my 20s when I learned this lesson. So when you have something like this that's not straight across, here's the easiest way to do it. You just cut straight. And then you take your scissor and instead of cutting around the shape like this, you hold the scissor still and move the paper while slowly closing the scissor. I don't, am I the last person in the world to know this? Does everybody know this except me? Um, just go slow, and you don't even have to go that slowly. I'm just going a little more slowly to show you guys. But it makes for a beautiful edge cut, um, and you're not sort of hacking away at it. So there's best tip, best tip for your Saturday night. Um, I want to know, I've heard a bunch of you say that you have, like, your daughters are joining you, or your kids, or your sister, and you're doing it on Skype. I, I want to know what you guys are doing. I, I love this idea so much, and I can't tell you how happy it makes me that everybody is doing this. Okay, can we talk about this cool stuff for a second? So, again, because I'm a more traditional crafter, I have probably every type of adhesive <laughs> there is on the market. Um, first of all, I love that that stands upright because I can't tell you how many, you know, different glue things I've used. And I don't know if you guys know this, but um, when you have glue sticks in a warm place, they can actually sort of melt down. The fact that you turn it on its head, quote unquote, means you're always gonna have the glue right where you need it. Also, it comes out blue, so you can um, see exactly where it's going, and it's washable if you get it on stuff. So don't feel like you have to rush. Um, it comes out blue so you can see where you're putting it, and then it starts to clear. When I first was using it, I was like, oh no, it's getting dry. No, it's just not, it's just starting to get clear. So I'm gonna put this here. And again, because it is a glue stick, it is very forgiving. And remember, you're gonna see that little bit of an edge. And here's another great tip too. When you're working on these, don't worry too much if the very edge doesn't get glued down because what you can do is once it dries is take a Q-tip and just boopity boop in there and tuck it wherever you need it. So don't worry about the corners too much um, when you're working on putting this together. Okay. So for those of you that got this kit, I want to know, have you started it already? Did you do something different to it? Um, what are you going to use it for? I want to hear all the things. I want to hear all the good stuff. If you are doing these projects with us, um, I would love for you to tag me on Instagram or Facebook. Um, it's the Kingston home everywhere. Or tag Crayola, um, hashtag Crayola Crafts, because we're being fancy. But we want to see your projects. I want to share what you guys are doing, because I think this is just the coolest thing ever. And I have been loving having this chance to do it with everybody. Okay, a couple more. Um, while I'm doing this, let's talk about handwriting because it's going to be, um, we're going to work on the stickers in a second. So I want to know who else has terrible handwriting. 
I have horrendous handwriting. I freely admit that. Um, I am jealous of all the people that have, you know, like these people that do hand lettering for a living. I have, I'm very fortunate to have a lot of friends that, um, you know, have their own brand of markers or um, teach classes all over the world. I'm, I'm not that person. <laughs> so I want to know if you have amazing handwriting. But if you don't, you are my people. And I'm going to talk in a second about what else you can do with the label stickers for those of us that don't have great handwriting. Because I freely admit every time I see a project that requires nice handwriting, I sort of feel like I'm not worthy of it, as crazy as that sounds. Like, I don't want to ruin it. When I saw this, when I came up with this sort of hack for doing the stickers, it made me so happy. So I want to share that with you guys who maybe also don't have great handwriting. If you do have great handwriting, please tell me how. <laughs> Were you born with it? Did you practice? Um, my mother and my grandmother um, have the most stunning handwriting. And um, I think it's because, you know, they were taught that back in school, but I think it's a gift that has been lost. So I wanna know if you have great handwriting, is it because you studied it? Tell me, tell me all the things. I wanna know all the things. Okay, last one. I bet you guys thought you wouldn't be watching me glue stuff on today. Okay, so I've got this, right? I'm sort of loving how this is turning out. And remember, if you like a more subdued style, um, that green and blue that I had out here, you could do several drawers like in this color and maybe paint the others. You could maybe do a solid card stock, paint the whole thing, whatever tickles your fancy because I want you to love this when you are done with it. So I'm gonna set this aside, put the little more glue stick. And now my friends, we're gonna talk about stickers. So if you look at the box. Um, if you look at the samples online, it shows you, here I'll show you right here. It shows you to write down like pins, stickers, to use it as storage. You can use it for jewelry. I'm not doing that. And I'm so excited to show you how mine turned out. But I want to show you, if you're not someone who feels comfortable, I want to show you something really cool that you can do with this. So because there's a little um, edge around the outside, and by edge I mean See when I peel this off, it's, it's got that extra lip right there. And you've got all this space around here. I actually decorated the stickers first. So I didn't decorate them with my handwriting. I decorated them with pens and it's just as easy as this. So like, I wanna do this oval. Whatever you wanna do, dots, squares, diagonals, triangles, rainbow, multicolor, Make it easy on yourself, make it fun. And that took just seconds. And see then when I peel it off, it adds that extra pop of color. It's still handmade, but it looks better than it would if I did it myself. So then I can just go ahead and stick that on. And I did that for all of my labels. So you would just add your labels. If you wanna do your handwriting, you can. But here's what I did that I'm gonna show you, my final reveal. Are you ready? Are you guys emotionally ready? I'm so excited. I actually love how this turned out. This is how mine turned out. So instead of putting things like pins or earrings or necklaces, I decorated each of the labels and I did numbers because I'm going to use this as a birthday like countdown to your birthday um, box. So the week of, say my husband, even though I won't be giving it to him because he's standing right here. <laughs> One, two, first day, like say his birthday was on a Saturday. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then he would get his big box on Saturday. So you get a little gift every day. Or if your kids are going back to school, this could be a first week of school. Like I, and these are just um, stickers. So you, whatever you've got at home, if you've got great handwriting, like I said, this one I colored as a rainbow. I just want you to think sort of outside the box, get it, quote unquote. Um, so that's what I love about this project is we all start with the same brown box. We all start with the same pad of paper, but you can make it whatever you want it to be. If you want it to be a storage box for office supplies, great. If you want it to be for your jewelry, great. But I'm sort of loving this as a, 
week-long celebration of something or a countdown to something. So, and it saved me from having to do handwriting. <laughs> I was very excited about that. Okay, I wanna see what you guys are doing with your projects. Um, I'll have another, we'll have another sip of our cocktail. Next week, I would love for you to come back. Oh, next week we're doing the DIY string lights. They're gonna be the cutest thing ever. Um, next Saturday night, 7 p.m., right here. Again, I would love to see what you are making with these. If you are doing something completely different, if you're using them for a different on a different technique or you're making something else with them, I wanna see. Um, so tag me, the Kingston Home, on all the things. And Crayola, they would love to see it too. And then hashtag Crayola Crafts and I'll be, be keeping my eyeballs on you guys. Um, thanks again so much for watching. I will see you next Saturday night. Take care. Bye-bye.